This video will talk about a different numerical method that's not going to be in the lab to talk about the idea of errors in numerical methods and what we can do with them to talk about classifying these different methods based on their order in terms of the error. We're going to take the same example that we had before. Our differential equation had a right hand side of f, y minus t, and the solution with our given initial condition was t plus 1 plus e to the t. Now what we want to talk about here basically is how does the error in a fixed step size method depend on the step size. OD45 does not have a step size. It's an adaptive method so it's going to adjust it as it goes. So it doesn't really fit in this discussion. But for any of the other methods, Euler or Runga Kutta, we can talk about how changing the step size affects the error at the end of our calculation. And now we're going to run midpoint Euler this other numerical method three times at three different step sizes and see how the errors compare the idea of how the error is going to depend on the step size. So we're on the first one with t1, y1. We'll use midpoint Euler of this f. We'll take our dt to be 0 0.2, t final of 10, t0 is 0, and y0 is 2. And we'll do the exact same thing for two more step sizes, each kind of by factor of 2 each time. So I've now got t2, y2 with a step size of 0.1, and t3, y3 with a step size of 0.05. Now let's compute the error in each of these cases. So the first one we get by error 1 is the absolute value of y1 of n minus the solution value. I can do the same thing for y2 and y3 as well. And I'm going to not suppress these outputs so I can see the values, and then I can run this section. So there's definitely going down each time. This first one is about 1,000, 1,200, 1,230. The second one is about 340, and then the last one is 90. The error is going down, as it should. If I take smaller step sizes, I should get a better approximation to my solution. Well, what's actually happening here, it looks like every time the error is going down by a factor of about four, right? I started at 1.2 thousand, I went down to about 300, then I'm at about 90, right? It's going down by about a factor of four every time. So is that something particular to the method, or I just get lucky here? Well, I cut the step size by a factor of 2 from 0 0.2 to 0 0.1 to 0 0.05. So maybe that has something to do with how the error seemed to drop by a factor of 4 every time. And this idea of the step size by a factor of 2, the error by a factor of 4, is at least the idea of the order of a numerical method. Let's jump into that idea real quick. So the idea here is kind of the following. The error should in some way depend on the step size and the error should go to zero as the step size goes to zero. This part here is referred to as a numeric method being consistent in that it actually approaches the actual solution as you take more and more and more steps. It's not critical here, but that's just the idea that that thing's out there. So for most of these cases, what we see is an exponential dependence. So we say that the order of a numerical method is the power alpha in the relationship, e is some constant c times h to the alpha, where e is the error of the method and h is the step size. Now the reason why it's of this form generally comes from how you derive these methods and how they're going to work, and that comes out of Taylor series. But the main point to understand here is that a relationship of this form is what we're looking for, and we're looking for the power alpha in this relationship. If I can find the power alpha, that means I know what the order of the method should be. So how does this alpha relate we talked about before? Well, if I have two different instances of this process, so if I have an error one and error two, which is c h one to the alpha, and e two is c h two to the alpha, if I divide these two equations, I get e one over e two, equals c h one to the alpha over c h two to the alpha, which is just h one over h two to the alpha because the c's cancel out. And so what this really says is this side here is the factor by which you reduce the step size, right? h one over h two is the ratio of the two step sizes that you use. There's the power alpha here, and the right hand side is the factor by which the error is reduced. So if we know how much we reduce the step size by, if we knew the order as well, we could then determine how much the error should go down by. Or we could work that backwards to find the order from this information. But if I cut the step size by a factor of two, which we did in our example, the error dropped by a factor of four, that means this alpha should be two because two squared is four. 
or one half squared is one fourth, depending on how you want to picture the, the setup here. This means that the order of this method should be two, which it should be, and that's great. Now, what if you don't want to take my word for it that the error dropped by a factor of four there? Can we do this in a more analytic way to actually extract this alpha from the equation? The answer there is yes. So we start with our equation. E is some constant times h to the alpha. And I want to figure out a way to solve for that alpha. Well, I can take the log of both sides. So we'll do natural log here. It doesn't matter which log you use. Log of E is the log of C times H to the alpha. I can then use log rules here. Log of C plus log of H to the alpha. And then one more log rule to pull down the alpha. So then what is this alpha? This alpha is the slope of the line if I were to plot log of E log of the error versus log of step size. So if I draw this log log graph and then find the slope of that line, which it should be a line or fairly close to it, that will give me the order of this method. Let's see what that bit looks like in MATLAB. So back over in our code, I wanna now take a bunch of different step sizes and then find the error. So let's set a bunch of step sizes. I know that these here don't have to be all spaced by factors of two. I can pick whatever I want for step sizes. And this will work just fine because I'm going to, I don't have to worry about the actual numbers. I can just use MATLAB to solve it out for me. We're gonna set up an array of zeros to be the errors once I run them. Now we wanna loop through and get all the errors. And now with our errors in place, I can find the different logs. So I can do LNE is log of errors. And MATLAB uses log for natural logs, so be careful with that. L and H is log of step sizes, and then we can plot this. And we see here the results here look kind of weird. It's not quite a line. Most of it is. There's a little blip here at this error, as well as a blip here at the end. To experiment with this more, let's try adding some more smaller values and see what happens. Okay, so we're just getting some weird blips in this process with certain values. This is the idea of sometimes just the numerical method works less well because of certain weird fluctuations, and it's not exactly fitting with the setup. So, we're going to get rid of some of these, and then we're good. It was the threes that were causing problems. Why? I don't know, but the threes are causing problems. So get rid of all the threes, and now we get a definitely a straight line here that we can use to solve this problem. So it was not a machine precision error. You'll get those much, much lower, but that can come up in other methods, like the Runga Kata method, where you'll run into those sorts of errors. But here we get a very nice straight line. Now, how can we find the slope of this line? Well, we could guess. That's fine. But we can also use MATLAB techniques to solve that out. And after a Google search on how MATLAB is linear regression, you want to set it up this way. This is given to you in the MATLAB code for this lab. So basically, I want to set a matrix X that's going to stack a column of ones next to a column of my X values. I'm going to set up this output B as X backslash LNE with an apostrophe to transpose it. If I don't suppress that output and run this section, we see the second parameter is one that I want. That is approximately two, indicating that the method here is in fact order two. You can extract the order from this set idea as well by writing a log log plot and then getting to the slope that way. It might seem a little long winded, but the idea is that this order idea gives us a way to characterize different numerical methods, which one is sort of better or worse than others based on their order. In most cases, the downsides of the computational in Involvement. So if a higher order method requires a more complex computational process to solve it, but you get better results for larger step sizes because of it. So it's a balancing act between the number of steps you want and the complication of computing the method. And you balance those when you're trying to pick which one method you want to use to solve a given problem numerically. This gives you the idea of how you can approach this, why the order matters, how it shows up, and how you can solve for it in MATLAB.